Hello dear students, I think in our lifetime we might have experienced and admired the beauty of uh, fireflies that which will be generally seen near railway tracks and how many of us know why they glow and how they glow. If you are a biology student, I think you can answer for yourself. Otherwise, here is a small topic for your sake about the glowing of this organism. Glowing of organism is given as bioluminescence. Bioluminescence means bio is living and luminescence is emission of light and it is a production of light from the living organism. And during this process, energy, chemical energy is converted to light energy and bioluminescence is a, a cold light that is they never give out heat during the emission of light. In this process, the excitation of energy is supplied by a chemical reaction ultimately giving up the light and this bioluminescence is generally seen in marine animals. Marine animals means the animals that which are living at the bottom of the ocean where there is no penetration of light and this region is called as abyssal region and most of the marine animals they exhibit a bioluminescence in order to uh, attract the uh, opposite sex or for luring the food etc. All these things we will be dealing in the coming uh, aspects of this topic. If you see the whole animal kingdom ranging from protozoan to caudates, the bioluminescence is well studied. Say for example, in protozoans, the bioluminescence is uh, seen by means of excitation of photogenic cells that which are present in the cytoplasm. And these photogenic cells, they get excited and illuminate light when electrically or mechanically stimulated. And protozoans, uh, marine protozoans like radiolarians, noctiluca and dinoflagellate are well studied regarding this subject. Noctiluca, it can emit light when they are stimulated electrically or mechanically. Similarly, the radiolarians, the radiolarians also exhibit bioluminescence. The third group of protozoan that which exhibit a bioluminescence is a dinoflagellates. I think you can see this picture on your monitor where the emission of lights are, is seen in the cytoplasm of the organism. And similarly, the uh, cylindrates, the next group of uh, non-chordates, the cylindrates also exhibit bioluminescence. Under this, the luminous organisms are hydrozones, polyps, jellyfishes, siphonophores and sea pens. Luminescence in this organism occur in response to the stimuli. And here is a best example for emission of uh, light in hydrozone. You can see the color of this hydrozone showing green and red colors. And the green and red color, they resemble the fluorescence, but they are not fluorescent lights. They are emitted by the uh, organism through the photogenic cells. Skyphozoa is another group of organism under cylindrates, which gives well about the bioluminescence. Similarly, the tenophores. Tenophores are luminous and they show photogenic cells in gastrovascular system. When they are parasitized with other group of microbes, they illuminate a lot. And here you can see on the monitor, the illumination is seen in different colors. And this coloration is because of the diffraction of the microorganisms that which are present on the tenophores. But exact uh, bioluminescence is done through the gastrovascular system only. But this multicolor system is because of the uh, parasitization of the uh, microbes. Coming to the next group of uh, non chordates analytes. And these analytes, they exhibit luminescence. And the luminescence is seen in only in few of the analytes, that is terrestrial analytes. Terrestrial analytes include the polychaetes and oligochaetes. And the photogenic cells 
are present in the hypodermis along with the mucus cell production and all these are under the control of a nervous system. Hence, we can consider this as a neurogenic reaction. And this is well exhibited uh, both in oligocates as I have already given you. Uh, for example, in ferritima, you can see the slime production from hypodermis and this slime production is uh, given out when they are stimulated and the slime production exhibit the luminescence and similarly the other group of other species of analytes like the tomopteris they exhibit uh, luminescence by excitation of photogenic cells that which are present in the nephridia very important to note down that is the photogenic cells are present in the nephridia and they give out the luminescence. Here is a diagram for you that is the slime production in earthworm. The whole blue color that which is representing they, form, uh, they act as the, uh, the it is nothing but the slime which is produced from the organism when they are triggered and that is glowing because of the uh, stimulus given to them. And coming to the next species that is Tomopteris. Tomopteris you can see the parapodia is exhibiting the luminescence number one and number two the nephridial structures also give out the luminescence. That means the photogenic cells are present in both uh, nephridia as well as in a partially in the parapodia. And the number of species under arthropods exhibit uh, luminescence. Mostly under arthropods the crustaceans and the insects they give out luminescence. But whereas the myriapods and arachnids they rarely exhibit luminescence. Under arthropods the cypridina and firefly exhibit a fundamental chemistry of bioluminescence. Fundamental chemistry of bioluminescence means the bioluminescence is well studied under cypridina and firefly. Similarly, under the arthropods we got a different uh, groups of organism which emit light. For example, here on your monitor you can see the shrimp. The shrimps they show the photogenic cells distributed all over the body hence they can give out the light throughout the body. Among insects luminescence is seen in few orders. Species of columbellon exhibit continuous glow and the larvae of ceratoplanus uh, tipulate fly are highly luminous and they give out light through malfeasant tubules. See I think you can see the difference between the previous organism and this organism. In Tomopteris you could see the nephridia producing the uh, photogenic cells and emitting the light but whereas here in this group of uh, insects you can see the malfeasant tubules are giving out the light. That means the basic concept over here is the excretory system is playing a major role in having the photogenic cells and emitting the light. He, here is a, some diagram for you that is the columbellon. The green hole structure is when they are seen under dark they, they emit the light in the form of green light and in the larval stages also they exhibit uh, the luminescence. In Coleoptera specifically in Lampridae the fireflies the reflecting cells of photogenic cells consists of purine molecules, purine molecules like urates and these urates they act as reflecting cells and these urates are present at the uh, abdominal region posterior end of the organism and this abdominal photogenic cells they give flashes of light and the flashing of light is under the control of nervous system. Here is an example for you the lampridae at the posterior end you can see the light emission and this is done by, by the photogenic cells. Okay. Then coming to the next group of organism that is mollusk and the mollusk cephalopods exhibit the luminescence such as loligo and squids they exhibit bioluminescence and loligo produces light by the cells, uh, photogenic cells that which communicate with the exterior uh, organism, basically the bacteria 
and generally this organism they are seen associated with some of the symbiotic bacteria. Symbiotic bacteria are those bacteria which live with another host and the host and the bacteria both of them they get benefits from each other. Here the symbiotic bacteria acts as a uh, photogenic cell and reflects the light. The squid heterocytes show unpaired luminous organ in the mantle when they are in danger they release a cloud of photogenic cells so that the whole organism is clouded with the light and they get protected with the cloud of light. These are the some of the best examples for uh, cephalopods that is uh, you can see here the loligo and the squids on your monitor. Coming to the other group of organism that is echinoderms the last group under non chordata under this group only the ophiroidea exhibit bioluminescence and these animals show a number of luminous uh, unicellular organism around their body. When these animals are triggered the unicellular organism that which are present they try to glow and protect the animal. This is the ophiotrix which you can see it which is almost glowing and this glow is because of the microbes that which are present on the body of it. Now coming to the next group of animals that is vertebrates and the vertebrates the vertebrates are classified into uh, the primitive vertebrates and the uh, modified or developed vertebrates. The primitive vertebrates are the protochordates under the protochordates we got two most important uh, groups that is hemichordata and the urochordata. These two groups are very important in exhibiting bioluminescence. Under hemichordata the important species the balanoglossus they emit light when they are triggered. There is a common feature between balanoglossus and analytes as we have already studied in our lower levels that is the balanoglossus has close affinity with analytes and they emit a mucus and this mucus that which is produced on the body of the animal they glow. Similarly here in balanoglossus when it is activated or when it is stimulated they produce slime and that slime consists of the light. Then coming to the second group of protochordates that is uh, urochordates under urochordates acidians and tunicates and these tunicates they exhibit a peculiar type of uh, emission of light that is uh, all these tunicates will be seen in the form of a groups and that is in the form of a colony and when one member of the colony is triggered the whole colony will try to illuminate. This illumination of the whole colony is called as colonial um, bioluminescence and this is done by the activation of single cell photogenic activation in a single colony. This is a picture of a balanoglossus where you can see it's slightly glowing when they are triggered. Similarly the whole colony of the tu uh, tunicates glowing when they are stimulated either mechanically or just stimulation given by any other source. Coming to the most important group of organism that is fishes. Under Pisces different groups of Pisces they exhibit a uh, bioluminescence. Mostly the fish that which are living in the benthic region as well as in the abyssal region they emit bioluminescence. For example Monoceratus, the light production is due to the symbiotic bacteria present around the special organs. And Malacocephalus, when excited, they release light from the ventral side of the body. Here are some special features in these fishes. Some of the fishes they show chromatophores. Chromato means color and force is pigments. The pigments that which are there in some of the fishes they try to produce some uh, emission of light but in general they do not emit light but they reflect light and this reflection of light is seen in majority of the amphibians, uh, some of the fishes, reptiles and crustaceans and even in the cephalopods. 
they are largely responsible for the reflection of light and that are seen on the skin as well as on the eye and the color formation is seen or reflection of the lights is seen when the chromatophore cells are matured in nature and basing on the type of the conditions the emission of light varies some of them they give rise to yellow color if they show xanthophores and some of them they give rise to red color if they show erythrophores and some of them they give rise to iridophore that is a reflective lights and the lactophores they give rise to white like this we got several types of chromatophores and each one of them respond according to the situation and the condition of the uh, environment and this emission of light is basically because of the membrane associated vesicles found in some forms of photosynthetic uh, bacteria. Here is an example the zebra fish which shows a chromatophore exhibiting the xanthophores uh, giving rise to yellow color similarly the cyanophores giving rise to blue color uh, blue color stripes on the fish. Similarly the other type of uh, pigments the photophores as you understand that photophore is photo means light and four is pigment the pigments that which uh, reflect the light and the character of photophore is important in the identification of benthic fish very important that is they are generally useful for identification of benthic fish photophores of fish are mainly used for attracting food and confusing the predators photophores are also seen in cephalopods and most of the uh, fireflies and squids here is a small uh, example you can see it on your monitor the yellow color small fishes they are highly uh, seen with photophores and they just confuse the larger fishes not only the animals even the fungi can also emit the light and they are also bioluminous here is a one small example uh, omphalotus oliaris they exhibit bioluminescence and the microbes like E. coli also exhibit a bioluminescence. Here is a small example of rat tail fish and hatch fish which illuminate light because of the presence of symbiotic bacteria. Finally, the most important aspect of bioluminescence is the physical aspects. The physical aspects is as I have already told you the production of light by the bioluminescence is not a uh, hot reaction but it is a cold reaction and bioluminescence requires energy and this energy is uh, derived from the organism and they help in excitation of the molecules and ultimately give rise to the uh, light and the different colors are given out from different organism. One most important feature here is the organisms they give rise to this light within the range of visible light visible range is from 350 to 700 all these organism they emit light between 400 to 600 nanometers but the intensity of light is very less though the intensity of light is less the animals that which are living in dark they can identify this uh, small lights that which are emitted by the organism coming to the chemistry of bioluminescence bioluminescence is enzymatically catalyzed chemiluminescence chemiluminescence means where you utilize high energy for excitation of molecule that is a, and ultimately releasing into photon photon is your light this is given by e is equal to hv e is energy h is planck's constant and v is frequency there are certain reactions that which are involved in the organism that which lead to the production of light different types of animal uh, requires different types of chemicals for the production of light but the basic concept in all this group of animals is same the most important photoproteins like your luciferin and luciferase is common for all the organism as per du bois the reaction involved in bioluminescence is oxidation of a molecule called luciferin in the presence of luciferase gives rise to light generally the light can be blue light green light or any other but the lifetime of this light is only 10 to the power of minus 8 to 10 to the power of minus 9 seconds only 
If you see the different types of organism in firefly, the reaction is somewhat slightly different when compared to the whole bioluminescence process. Luciferin plus one high energy in the form of ATP and one magnesium ions in the presence of luciferase and oxygen molecule gives rise to adenosine monophosphate AMP and one molecule of CO2 and yellow color light. Here you can underline that firefly produces yellow color light. Similarly, in cylindrates, especially in hydrozones, the bioluminescence is not only by luciferin activity, but here you use the phosphor protein in the presence of calcium. Calcium ions are very important for emission of light in uh, cylindrates, that is in hydrozone. Phosphor protein plus calcium gives rise to light. Then control of bioluminescence. The flashing of light is rapid supply of uh, oxygen to anoxygenic photogenic uh, molecule. That is when the photogenic cells are in anoxic condition that is without oxygen, if you add oxygen to it immediately they will start glowing. And the second mechanism is the excitation of the uh, photogenic cells and which is under the control of nervous system that is neurogenic mechanism. And third type of um, control is especially in fishes, the sympathetic nervous system they control the production of light. Not only the uh, nervous system, even the hormones can also influence the bioluminescence process. Say for example, in fishes the epinephrine acts as one of the activator of bioluminescence. Coming to the significance of this organism, the three important functions of uh, bioluminescence is the luring of food and they serve as defensive organ and they are for warning or frightening of the predators and for bringing together the male and female during breeding season. That is the bioluminescence is mainly for protection and second is for luring of the food. Finally, the most important one is the breeding season during breeding season the male and females are attracted by a mechanism called dancing mechanism. This is about the basic concept of a bioluminescence.